In this video, I'll be showing how to get all the 7 Ready Player 2 relics, so make sure to subscribe with notifications on if you haven't yet for more Roblox event videos like the video. So the first relic is in Piggy, I'm gonna be trying to show this as fast as I can because it takes a while to get all of these and if not this video would be like an hour, so press play and then press book 2. This is to get the Crown of Madness, Robes of Madness, and Pants of Madness. What you need to do under commands, well if you're in a VIP server do commands, if not then just tell everyone to vote for this map, but it needs to be the Chapter 1 Alley's map, and then the mode doesn't really matter, so if you're in a VIP server then just select player, and then have someone else be piggy, and then have them like stand in the corner or something. So once you spawn you want to go into this room, just click the door to open it, and then you're gonna need to get the scissors, which to get the scissors, well you're gonna need the orange key, so just find the orange key and use that to unlock there, and then once you have that unlocked then most likely the scissors are going to be there, so use the scissors to cut this, and then most of the time the mop is in here, so then go over to the hotel room and then use the mop to clean the puddle up, which I think the hotel room might be locked, so you're going to need the key for that too. I'm going to speed it up, but just do what I do. You kind of need to do this with other people unless if you can do this extremely fast. So whenever it reaches 5 minutes, there's going to be knocks on the door, or actually 5 minutes 30 seconds. Well, whenever I did it earlier, it was 5 minutes. But anyways, the door is going to get knocked on and you have to count how many knocks there are. And then there are going to be dice around the map, well 3 dice, and you have to set them to the number of knocks. So he said there's 7, so I'm going to set the first one to 7. And the locations of them are the first dice is inside of the cafeteria room or the restaurant room thing and it is right by here so i'm just gonna set this to seven it's gonna take a little bit longer because it's a higher number so i have to click it seven times there i set it do it again because like after every dice is set then the person who's knocking has to knock again and count how many there are again and then you have to do that three times so the second one is 5, you're going to have to go in this laundry room place and then set this one to 5, so 3, 4, and 5, there, I did it, so then the last one is over here in the corner right here, and so I'm going to wait for him to say, and then 4, so now we can actually open up the door, so we got to go to this area, and then in the hotel room, once you click the door again, then you're going to hear an unlocking noise and you can go in there. So you're going to be in this area and then you have to like make all of the levers face that way. So like the one it's by is also going to change though, but you have to make them all facing the wall like I just did. And then this door is going to open up. Then you have to spam click the bottom of the torches for them to go out and the NPC is going to say the messages, so just click the bottom of the torches for them to all go out, and make sure you don't die though, and it's kind of better to have only one or two other people with you whenever you do this, so that it doesn't get too chaotic, and then you want to make this face the other way, so all of the levers have to be facing away from the wall now, so do that and then do that, and then this door is going to close, that one's going to open, so go through here, and then you have to go through this small like walkway thing and then it's going to start to have glitching on your screen and then we got to remember how many knocks there were so 755 five, five. we have to click the one that has seven lines so one two three four five that's nine so yeah just count how many are on each one and then click the one that matches it so one two three four five six seven yeah this one seven one, two, three, four, and then you also have to dodge that piggy, so now I just need to do the five, then the four, so, uh, also after this, if I don't make it, this is still how you do it though, so five, and then, oh no, oh no, that's not good, 
Yeah, now I have to click the one that has four. After I click the one that has four, that's gonna be good. It's a different code for everyone though. I'm gonna say click the one with four straight lines. I don't know if he's gonna do it, but yeah, just click the ones that correspond with how many knocks there were and try to dodge Piggy. So after you do that, then the door is going to open up and then you can go through the final door, which is right there. But you just click which one corresponds with the knocks. So the first one you click is the first amount of knocks and you know which number it is by the amount of straight lines it has. Next is Bee Swarm Simulator. So this one's actually pretty easy. I'd say the piggy one is a medium difficulty. This one's an easy difficulty. So just go over to this area by the spawn, like on the right of the spawn. And then there's going to be an auto converter. Get the auto converter. And then you have to redeem seven codes now. So go over to system. And then you have to enter these codes. The first code is troggles. The second code is jumpstart. The third code is, by the way, I already redeemed all these. The third code is Luther. The fourth code is D-Y-S-E-N-T-E-R-Y. The next code is Carmen San Diego. The next code is Millie. And then the last code is Word Factory. So after you have all of those entered, then you're going to get like the seven gears you need to make that item over here because you're going to need those seven gears and the auto converter so go back over to the shop there's going to be this item right here and then uh whenever the shop's open press the left once and that's going to show this and you're going to need those seven pronged cogs seven of them and then the micro converter just craft that and then click the equip button right where it says equip and then just equip that and then now you're going to be able to see a B in the computer screen. So go over to the computer screen, talk to the B, and then the B is going to show some symbols. So I recommend to like either take screenshots of every symbol it shows by pressing like the print screen button, or if you're on a phone, just press whatever the screenshot buttons are on your phone. And then also you can just like record it if you want to. So phones have a recorder on them built in by default. And then you can like get a recorder on a PC. Or you can just like keep track of what symbols the bee is showing because it's only going to show four. And then you're going to have to go over to the dandelion field, which is right here. And then there are going to be symbols once you like get some of the pollen. So destroy a bit of the dandelion field and then it's going to show those symbols. And then whenever you have the symbols, if you click them, then it's going to change them. But sometimes you have to spam click them. So just change all of the symbols on this field to the exact same symbols that the bee showed. Next, you have to talk to the computer bee again, but it's very important you remember what he says because he's going to give a code with letters. And if it says C, that's for clover, D is for dandelion, M is for mushroom, and S is for sunflower. So again, remember that code, but you're going to have to destroy the pollen in whatever fields he says. Or well, you might have to destroy the pollen in the fields first and then talk to him. But whichever fields have the symbols after you do that are the ones you're going to have to use. So like set the symbol to whatever the bee glitches to because the bee is going to go out of the computer and like glitch around in the field and then after he glitches around like during the glitch or after the glitch it's going to show the symbol on the computer bee's face and then you just like put whatever that symbol was on the field and then after they're on all of the fields then destroy the pollen in the blue flower field and then like replicate the symbols in order from what the bee said so like, for example, if it was M, C, S, D, then you would want to put the code thing from mushroom first, then clover, then sunflower, then dandelion. It's very important that you put them in, in a row or it's not going to work. But then once you do that, then you can just talk to the computer bee again, and then you're going to have done everything, and the bee is going to give you the how to program basic book. Next is Roblox in high school, do this as fast as you can, close everything, close everything, press explore, press school, go over really, really fast, you're gonna have to go through the door, press sprint to go even faster, but this is for the bombastic bling, bombastic jeans, and bombastic hoodie, so go into the library really fast, sit in this chair, and you have to do this before 8am or else the key won't spawn, you really need to get the key because you need the key to unlock a secret door, so just wait until 8 happens, and then at 8.04 it is going to spawn the key, so right now it's 8.01, and then each endgame minute, 
minute is like three to four seconds and then the key's gonna be here press e to pick it up or click to pick it up and then keep sprinting go over this way you have to turn right once you enter the school or turn left once you enter the school that way just go where it says classrooms and then a turn left at the end of this area over here and then there's gonna be the workshop and then there's also going to be the secret door that you have to go through to do this obby and then once you get in there's gonna be a portal so just go over to the portal it's gonna teleport you somewhere and it's teleporting me right now then you don't have to leave it shift to sprint on or you don't have to leave sprint on because it might make it a little bit harder to do some of the levels but you're going to need it for the second part so just use sprint this time and then go on each of these things jump over the lava you don't want to get the lava i'm only going to try this once if i die then i'll just remember to do this obby it's really hard a lot of people were complaining about how hard it was including me but uh yeah it's just very very hard to do and kind of difficult because like i mean it's not really that difficult to do each level but like there are so many of them that makes it kind of difficult and then on this one there's a secret trick the secret trick is to just like jump forward two at once i just fell I don't think that was a good idea. I probably should have not done that secret trick, but every time you fall, you're just gonna like go back to the spawn. But on that level that has these, you wanna jump over two at once. So like jump from here to here where my mouse is and then jump from there to there and then do the last one normally because the last one's almost flat. So you don't have enough room to really do that. And then do all of the others without sprinting and do them normally except for well this one don't do it normally this one's like really stressful if you don't know what you're doing or if you're on mobile or if you're on xbox or if you're not already really good at obbies they made this one too hard in my opinion but yeah you want to go over to whenever you're at this area jump over two at once trust me it's going to be way better the furthest amount you can jump if you like stop right before the end of the jump it's going to be way easier to do this just like try jumping over two at once and no sprint though and it's going to be way easier to do than jumping over every single one and then all of the other ones are normal at the end and there's going to be a portal that you can actually go through so I think the end is like right over here. So yeah, whenever you're at the very end, then look at the ground and there is going to be a portal on the ground that you can go through now. There used to not be one, but they did that to make it kind of easier. But yeah, you see how there's a big portal right there? You just want to jump through that portal when you're at the end and it's going to teleport you to the item. Now, I already got the item. I'm wearing it. I'm wearing three of the items. I'm wearing all the items here. But yeah, just to do that and then you're going to get the bombastic bling. Next is bad business. You're going to get the one by one by one by one's teapot shirt and pants here. So first you need to click the gift button because that's codes and type in code unicorn and then redeem that. I already redeemed it. After that, go over to outfits, click on a face and then wear the VR goggles and then you're going to need to press the deploy button the locations are kind of random but all of the spawns are not really that hidden so like they're meant for you to see they're not going to be hidden like under something they're not going to be hidden on this wall because it would be kind of harder to see there they're going to be hidden in places they're not really hidden they're just going to be in places that are kind of easy to see but since the location is very and it isn't guaranteed to spawn in that exact place just go around the map looking for symbols to scan i already got two i've been here for about a minute but they're very easy to find just go around the map looking for blue symbols and then try to scan them and then after that you want to go over to the door and the door also isn't guaranteed to be in a specific location so just look around until you find the door and on this map or this time whenever i'm playing it it was on one of the boats and then the last time i played it it was in a room so yeah just look around for the stuff it's going to change randomly but i'm not entirely sure though i think they might actually be in the same locations for everyone anyways here's the locations they were in for me whenever i was trying to get the item
After you get all the pieces, go over to the door. It took about three minutes for me to get all of these pieces. They're literally right out in the open around the map. But you want to put the unicorn head, and then the wing, and the lower part of the unicorn, and then the lower back part of the unicorn. Sometimes you won't get all of the pieces you need, so you'd have to rejoin and then try to get the Tides map again, or the Factory map. Some of the other maps probably have enough pieces, but all I know of are the Tides map and the Factory map. But after you get all those pieces, you want to make the Unicorn. So you can see how it looks like a Unicorn except for this piece. Well, you're going to need the piece that matches there. I don't really have it, but after you put all of them, then it's going to say successful or something, and it's going to teleport you to a place, and then there are going to be zombies there, and then you just have to shoot the zombies, and sometimes there are going to be markers in the sky that have a V pointing at places. So just go wherever that marker is pointing and then fight more zombies. You have three lives. Next is Shark Bite. So this is actually probably the hardest one. But what you want to do, you have to be the shark and eat all of those buoys around the map. So there's four, there's that one, there's one over there, there's one over there, and then there's the fourth one right there. So yeah, all of four, and then you're gonna have a super boost, and then you have to go over to where there's the O rock formation. So there's like an area where there's an O shape in the rock, which is right there. And then as the shark though, you have to be the shark to do this, I'm just the player because I think it's a little easier to show as the player, but you want to go down here and then do a super boost into the green rocks. Since I already did this, I have the fish here, but just super boost into that. Everything saves though, you don't have to do it in the next round, but go over to the poster and type, you're gonna need a bigger boat, and then you're actually going to get the four buoys that you need. It's gonna have a menu here, and it's gonna show four buoys in it. You have to type it exactly how I typed it though. Next, you're going to have to be a player and go over to the sunken ship. So how you find it is, well, go in your boat, and then look at the back part of the lighthouse island place. So I'm just gonna wait for the shark animation, and there we go. So this is the front part of the lighthouse, you have to go to the part where there is the glass wall and stuff, so like the exact opposite part from here and behind that island. Then there's going to be the Titanic there, I don't really know if it's called the Titanic, but uh, a lot of people are calling it Titanic, so I'm just gonna call it that. So you gotta find the Titanic, which is like right under here, and if you can't really find it that well, you can just get out of your boat and swim a little bit. But it's supposed to be like right in this area behind this island. You can kind of see it through the water a little bit. Yeah, it's right there. So you're going to have to attach all of the buoys to it. So whenever you're underwater, well I already did this so I can't do it again. But you're going to have to attach the buoy there where there's that thing and then that thing. And there are going to be two hooks on this side and you have to attach it to those hooks also. But once you do it, it's going to play an animation of the Titanic going up. And then you have to go back over to the fish to get the next thing as the player though. So wherever your boat was, go back to your boat. Like it's gonna say E attach a buoy, so it's like really easy to attach it. But yeah, you just want to go back over to your boat now, which my boat is driving itself for some reason. So uh, let's just go back to it. I'm, it's good that it turned nighttime like right after I did that though because it's kind of impossible to see during the nighttime. So anyways, you want to go back over to the place where there's the O formation of rocks that I already showed and then go back to that fish guy and then he's going to give you a gem so it is... Or wait, no, that's not the O formation. It's the one that has like the really small O formation by the other rocks. So yeah, it is this one right here. So go back to the fish guy and then he's going to give you that gem and then you have to go back to the lobby after this. So it's going to do another thing where he chats because like every time you do something, there's a chatting animation thing and he just says some stuff. So you want to go up here with these floating pad things and then once you're at the top of the lighthouse you want to jump though, or not like the very top, but once you can see that platform there you're going to have to jump off of this. So like right there and then go outside, there's going to be this telescope and then you just put the gem in and then the sun is going to be right there, so under the telescope. 
angle it towards the sun and then after you do that it's gonna glitch out and do some stuff so i'm gonna go through here before it makes me be the shark but yeah you just have to press the left or right thing and the up and down thing to kind of navigate that and then after you do that then the portal is gonna open up that i just went through and it's gonna do this and it's gonna teleport you to the boss battle which is actually pretty hard to do so what happens first is there's this lava spinning thing which you just have to make your boat go in a circle it's pretty easy to pass unless it spawns like right where your boat is and then you have to hit him with the rockets because it's going to spawn the rockets after so just loop around him and hit him with the rockets and then like in between every time he does the thing then it's going to have rockets and then you just have to hit him with the rockets all four times so the first one is the lava spinning thing, the second one is random rocks falling, which sometimes it glitches and spawns rocks where it doesn't even show it's going to spawn. And then the third one is the laser one, which is actually probably the easiest one, and you just have to keep going in a circle. And then the last one is insanely hard, it's ma mainly based on luck. Like, you have to dodge rocks and go in a circle to avoid the lava spinning thing at the same time. So it's actually very difficult, well, unless if you're very lucky you can do it the first or second time. But yeah, it takes most people a while to do. You just go in a circle like I am, where every now and then you just press A or hold A to make the boat turn. And then you can pass that easily. And then after this, it's going to teleport you to an area where you just have to dodge the shark that's flying. And then if you make it to the very end of that, which dodging the shark is insanely easy though, because there are some places and you just have to go around those places. But yeah, just go in a circle and then make the rockets hit him. Uh, they just hit my boat. But yeah, make sure they don't hit your boat. Just fight the boss. And then at the end, whenever... It has that long walk thing where, with the flying shark whenever you get to the end. Then you just have to touch the helmet at the very end. And then it's going to say that you got it and give you the badge. Next is Vehicle Simulator. In my opinion, this one is the most fun out of all of them. But you want to go over to down this street. And then there's somewhere you need to turn. And I'll just speed this up. You have to go over to the one office building place thing. Once you're here on the vending machine, you need to buy the chocolate donut, hot dog, soda, strawberry donut, glazed donut, and then another hot dog, then cola. And it's going to say access granted, and then a flash green, then you need to go inside of this elevator. And then once you're down here, then there's going to be a ready player 2 thing that you can wear. So like go into this room and then go over this, buy it, and then go to your phone, which is going to be in your inventory, and then, or you can just like click there, and then open up settings, then the AR goggles, and press on, then you're gonna have kind of a green view of everything, and I don't really think those words on the wall have anything to do with this. Like a lot of the things that were kind of hints for the Ready Player 2 event, were so random that like they don't seem like hints even when I know how to do it or maybe they're just putting that there to make people think of swimming in the water or something I I don't really know but yeah you, there are eight things you have to collect there around the map randomly whenever you're wearing the goggles though it's actually going to make noises and that is a good thing so you just want to like swim in the water or reset or something so you can respawn and then whenever you hear beeping noises, well, turn your volume on so you can hear the beeping noises. And I don't know why it didn't load my avatar, but on your phone again, do the thing. And then whenever you hear beeping noises, go near the beeping noise. And then whenever it gets louder, then you're eventually going to see one of these and you just have to touch it to collect it. So I'm going to show all of the, those locations. It's going to be sped up a little bit though. And, uh, yeah, if you can't really find them that well, or if the locations change or something, then again, just 
listen for the beeping noises and go to them. I tried to look around a bit so you guys could see exactly where I was, but after you get all of them then it's going to play a cutscene and you have to go back over to that area. So just do the same exact code again with the chocolate thing, it's going to say access denied first for some reason, but then just try to buy it again and it's going to let you. So just like buy all of the stuff like you did earlier to open up the area, and it's going to say access granted again, this area is going to open up again. And then you're going to be able to go into the door because you guys saw how the door opened. So yeah, once this opens up right here, then just go out again and then go through this area. And you're going to have to kind of do an obby and then spawn your car afterwards and run down the stairs fast. So I'm going to speed this part up. You're going to need the launch code, and the launch code is 1985, so just enter that, press OK. It'll say your rocket activated, go inside the rocket, so this thing is going to come out, walk across it, go inside of the rocket, and then now you're going to get the badge. After this, it teleports you to space, or while well, there's a portal, and then you can go through that to go to space, but you don't need to do that. You just need to get in the rocket and then wait for it to launch, and then you'll get the badge then. Unless if they changed it, if you didn't get the badge yet, then just stay in there, and then maybe even go through the portal until you get the badge. But yeah, the rocket's just going to do that after it counts down, and then it's going to fade to black. Then you're going to be able- oh, there's no portal this time. Oh, never mind, there's a portal. But yeah, if you don't get the badge yet, just go through this portal, and then you should be good. But there, that's how to get the badge in Vehicle Simulator. But last is Dungeon Quest. So this is actually the hardest one. Not only hard because of what you actually have to do in it, but because it's kind of glitchy. I don't know if I was just unlucky, but four times in a row it did the teleport fail thing sometimes whenever you try to teleport to places or it tries to teleport you to places then it says teleport failed and it doesn't let you teleport there and it did that for me four times in a row and i did exactly what i was supposed to do and then the other time as well two times i got the code but it didn't work, and I was 100% sure that was the code. So anyways, I guess I'll just be explaining how to get it here now. So first, you need to get the gems in a specific order. The order is red, yellow, blue, cyan, white, purple, green. So here is a clip of whenever I was trying to get the item and showing the locations of them. So just go to the exact locations that I'm about to show. After you do all of that, go on top of the tunnel area and then keep going up until you're at a good place where you can see all of the lights. So there's one right there, there's one on the house right there, there's one near the top up there, and then there's one right there, and then another one right there, but there are five. So you either want to record this or just take screenshots every time the lights appear and then like count how many there are each time. So they're going to flash six times 
and each time a different number of them is gonna flash or sometimes the same number but just like it's gonna flash six times and then each time it flashes take a screenshot or look at the video you recorded and like keep track of the amount that flashed that time so like if four of the five were on then the first number would be four if two of the five were on the first number would be two but then you want to do that and have a six digit code but you want to like start taking screenshots or start recording after all of them are dark for a few seconds because like if they're all dark that means it's about to start again because they have like 15 seconds in between being lit up again but after you get that six digit code then you want to go down here over to the lake area and then there's actually a door there. I think that was there for a while, but now it actually has a keypad. And so now it has a use. But just go over to that door by the lake. It is right there. And then enter your code on the door. Then it will teleport you to a place. Or if you're unlucky like me, it's gonna say teleport failed four tries in a row so i didn't even get to go to the boss even though i should have been there at least six or seven times now but yeah just put the code there it's gonna teleport you you gotta complete uh obby which is kind of easy i guess and then fighting the boss is hard though because the boss heals and does stuff and it has patterns so you're probably going to have to attempt fighting the boss a few times to actually not die and actually get the stuff but i don't know when the ready player 2 event is going to be gone a lot of people are saying tomorrow i don't think tomorrow because roblox usually leaves the events open for like another week or two for people to get the stuff like for example the rb battles event is gonna be here until i think it was december 12th even though the final battle is on a saturday so it's gonna be the fifth so it's gonna be there for another week after so the ready player 2 event's probably going to be here for another week i'm not entirely sure it could be tomorrow though so i suggest to try to get the dungeon quest thing today but it definitely is very hard after you get all of the relics join the ready player 2 event hub game and then go over to this crystal and just stand on it everything is going to light up so like all seven of the crystals for me the last one is not going to light up because i still need to get the dungeon quest one and i'm going to try to do that with like the rest of the day today until i go to bed hopefully it doesn't glitch anymore but yeah i'm going to try to do that and whenever you do that though then you're going to get the meta shades you are also able to get the meta star and the meta phones but you can't get those anymore because 77 people already got the meta shades and then for some reason 884 people got the meta phones but then everyone can get the meta shades though so yeah i guess that's how to get everything in the ready player 2 event so make sure to subscribe with notifications on like the video join the discord server linked in the description follow my twitter at telianthric i'm trying to hit 3000 followers there and 200k subscribers on youtube linked in the description as a guide for the ready player 2 event but i guess well, this video is basically everything in the Ready Player 2 event, but there's also a guide for the RB Battles event, so if you need help with anything there, then that's there in the description, but I'll see you all in the next video.